rendering unto Caesar separation of church and state. Crafty Jesus takes on his opponents and their difficult questions and trounces them. In all of the Synoptic Gospels we have the story of the question about paying taxes, one of the most difficult Jesus faced. And the phrase that he used in his reply, render unto Caesar, has become almost synonymous in Western culture with the idea of the separation of church and state. It's worth thinking though about how our presuppositions about that idea may impact our reading of the story. You see, the separation of church and state became a big issue at the time of the Reformation, and it resulted in the Lutheran doctrine of the two kingdoms. It also became a big issue at the time of the French Revolution, which bloodily separated church and state. All Western countries nowadays pretty much separate church and state, though in some, like the UK and even New Zealand, the issue is fudged. But it's part of our underlying cultural presuppositions. So, is Jesus render unto Caesar? talking about that. Well, we'll look at Mark, but the story is in all of the three synoptic gospels. Mark chapter 12, verses 13 to 17. We begin with a set-up trick question. They thinly disguise their trick question with flattery. Verse 14. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you're sincere and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? Verse 15, but knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. Show me the money. Verse 16, and they brought one, and he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The Emperor's. Now, the NRC there is simply not right. It's not, Whose head is this, that Jesus says, nor is it, as the NIV has it, Whose portrait is this? The word is icon. It's an image. And that's important because Jews took the commandments seriously. And right there at the start of the Ten Commandments is the one forbidding images. They took it so seriously that the Romans even allowed them to mint their own bronze coins with no images on them. The trouble was, the imperial poll tax had to be paid with a silver denarius, minted in Lyon at the imperial mint and imperial coins had images. Around the time of Jesus' birth, the result of this was a major rebellion against Rome. Luke chapter 2 verse 2 describes the, the census, the taking of the register for the poll tax, which led to the revolt. The person who led the revolt was Rabbi Judah of Galilee and the Romans had difficulty putting the rough old down. Then, thirty years or so later, along comes Rabbi Jesus of Galilee. And, at least according to Luke, the issue of tax was one of the things he was charged with when they brought him before. We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he is the Messiah, a king. Luke 23, 2. So, is this render unto Caesar business revolutionary Jesus. Jesus' opponents here are two groups who are very different, the Pharisees and the Herodians. The Pharisees are determined to obey the law of God, come what may. The Herodians are busy collaborating with Rome and making a good thing of it. The enemy is divided. So when Jesus says, bring me a denarius and let me see it, it was a Herodian who got it, probably out of his purse, the Herodians being rich. Whose image, whose inscription, Jesus says? Well, the image 
was of the ruling Caesar when the coin was minted, it was most likely a Tiberius denarius, but we are not sure, and similarly with the inscription. In the case of Tiberius it would have read, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. So both the inscription and the image were blasphemous. Yet the Herodians carried such coins, which were anathema to the Pharisees. But is it in fact even more than this? You only needed bronze coins for everyday life. Silver coins were only really needed for two purposes. Commerce on a large scale and paying your poll tax to the Roman authorities. Is Jesus, is he saying, you Pharisees and Herodians who have the possibility of doing commerce with silver coins, wouldn't you be better thinking about the people who only use bronze coins in everyday life than arguing about paying taxes? Is it Jesus once more condemning the rich and being more deeply revolutionary than we like to think? Certainly the Western reading is more comfortable, but is it right? Presuppositions are dangerous things. Bye for now.